Amen. Once again, we give honor to God the Father, to Jesus Christ the Son, and to the precious Holy Ghost. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to all of those that are here present today. Good morning to those that are on Zoom, those that are on their way. Uh, we bid you God's speed. Amen. Amen. Today is another day that the Lord has made, and since God has made it, we might as well go ahead on and rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Somebody say amen. 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 A lot of folks, they wake up in the morning, they be all grumpy and grouchy, complaining about this ain't right, that ain't right. But if God took the time out to make the day, amen. you ought to be grateful that he did. Amen. amen. Boy, I've been on that song. I've been on that song. Lee William, you didn't have to wake me this morning. Now listen to me. Hear me good. If you want something to complain about, let God not wake you up in the morning. Somebody better say something. <laughs> what, what you say, D? You ain't going to say nothing. So if you ain't going to say nothing when God don't wake you up, why when God wake you up, you got so much to complain about? I ought to be glad in it. Amen, amen. We thank God for waking us up this morning. Let us jump into our uh, printed text, uh, our lesson for today. Today, June the 23rd in the year of our Lord and Savior, uh, 2020, 23, 2024, June the 23rd, uh, 2024, our lesson is entitled, Full of assurance. Full of assurance. You can't be a quarter of the way assured. You can't be half way assured. You got to be full assured. Amen. Now, let's let's go to let's go to the automobile because most of us can relate. If your car is on a quarter of a tank, yeah, you better look out. You only can go so far. Yes. Amen? Yes. If it's on half of a tank, you can go a little piece of <laughs> Amen? <laughs> 99 and a half won't do. You got to make 100. Amen? Amen? So you got to have that full assurance our devotional reading is coming out of a very familiar passage of scripture. Psalms, the 23rd division of Psalm, one that uh, many Christian, many people can quote if, no, that if they don't know any other scripture in the Bible, uh, they can pretty well much quote Psalms 23. Somebody say amen. amen. Psalms 23, it it gives hope to people in every stage of their life. Amen. Whether they're going through something, Psalms 23 can comfort you. Uh, even during funerals and, 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 and things as such, uh, Psalms have a way of touching you. If, you, if you're struggling, uh, Psalms can help you. Psalms is a, is a division of Psalms that will help people in every aspect of your life. Our background of our printed text today is Hebrews, the sixth chapter, verses 9 through 20. And our key verse, or our golden text, is verse 19 and 20. That says, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and and steadfast. Th those are three key words. Anchor, sure, and steadfast. You got to be deeply rooted, anchor in the Lord. Amen, somebody. Amen. You got to know what you know if don't nobody else know. Help me, somebody. Amen. You know whether you say, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. You got to be sure of that. 
And you got to keep on doing what God required you to do. Amen. Even though it get tough sometimes, it might get hard, you might even get weak, but you still got to keep on keeping on. Amen. And which enter it into that within the, the veil. Whether the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus made a high priest forever after the order of Mel Cassidy. Mel Cassidy was a priest in the Old Testament. Uh, wasn't too much uh, stated on him, but it just it, 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 it was a couple of times that he was uh, he was uh, represented in in scripture. Where, where they pay tithes and offering to uh, this one priest. Let us get into our lesson for today. Full assurance, Psalms 23rd Division, our devotional reading. Let every heart say amen. amen. I don't know about you, but <clears throat> when I read the Psalms and when I read this one in my study, and first first thing come to mind, you know, we read this one often, we quote this one often, but do you really take the time out to stop and meditate on individual words, individual words in this particular song? Because it really have a lot of meanings. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Now you can just read a thing and won't get an understanding. Right. But if you read and study it and meditate on it, then it should have meaning into every word in it. Look at what the scripture says. First of all, it is a psalm of David. David was a shepherd. David was one that kept uh, his father's sheep. So David can, 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 can uh, rely on the words. He can identify with the words that he is saying here. He said, the Lord is. Let's stop right there. Who is the Lord? God is God. Amen. And he don't need nobody else. Amen, somebody. Amen. A lot of people go around here talking about Buddhas and talking about all these other gods. But God ought to be your everything. Amen. For in him we move and we live and we have our being. We can't do nothing without the Lord. Amen. Amen. So God is our everything. David said the Lord is. Now, listen to what David says. David said, he's mine. Somebody said mine. mine. Now listen, listen. I want y'all to listen to me real good. That's my wife. Amen. I got personal possession there. I'm speaking about a personal relationship. Amen. That's what David is saying about God. You can't say that He's mine unless you have a personal relationship with him. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to have a personal relationship. I was, I was having a discussion. Having a discussion this week. Brother was talking about helping my Lord. <laughs> he was talking about, you know, you know I, I tell y'all often about how people approach me, they be trying to impress their self about what they know about the Bible or something they seen on 
Yeah, YouTube somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't really believe or know what they are looking at on YouTube or on these uh, on these medias. They just going by what they just seen or heard. But unless you study God's word and you believe in God's word and you have experienced God, you don't know what God is. Amen, somebody. Unless you've been through something. Unless you've been tested, you can't have a testimony. Right. It won't have no power. Right. Amen? Amen? So David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He was getting personal. And when you talk about a shepherd, can I help somebody here today? Yes. The shepherd's supposed to feed and lead. I got a friend named Pastor, Pastor Clarence here. And he preached here several times, and especially during, I think it was during Pastor, my, my Pastor anniversary. Pastor Hill, the packing preacher, we call him. Pastor Hill, he often used to say, he often used to say that a shepherd's job is to feed and to lead. A sheep's job is to follow and swallow. Help us somebody. But what I learned in life, a lot of people are like goats. Yes, they are. Yes, yes, we are. We, we are like goats at times. We, we don't want to follow. We want to buck and kick and want to do things our own way. But a sheep is humble. One thing I like about a sheep, you never, you never see a sheep going to work. You never see a sheep applying for a job. You never see a sheep doing anything but just sitting there grazing in the in the pasture. And in order in order for them to go anywhere, a sheep has to be led Amen. by a shepherd. Amen. Now, sometimes that sheep will stray away from the flock. That's when the shepherd has a rod; he has to go out and pull him back into the fold. Somebody say, "Amen." So David said, the Lord is my shepherd. David is really letting you know that God is the one that lead him. God is the one that feed him. God is the one that give him his health and his strength. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. And he said, I shall not want. How many of y'all truly believe in Philippians 4 and 19 where it says that the Lord shall supply all of your needs. Do y'all believe that? Amen. We don't get things on our own. If God didn't give you health and strength, you couldn't go to work. Amen? Amen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you, didn't, if you didn't have good health, if you didn't have strength, you wouldn't be able to get them to go to work. But we we take credit for it on our own. I, I get up here every morning. I'm good about it, Brother John. I get up here every morning, 4.30 in the morning. But I thank God that he gave me health and strength. Boy, I went out and I worked 12, 16 hours for 40, 50 years. I saved up money here and there. I put money in the bank. I, I did this and I did that. We always take credit for what we done. Well, how many times do we often give God the credit for leading us and guiding us in the right direction? David said, the Lord is my shepherd and he said, I shall not want because God feeds you when you're hungry. Amen. 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 God comfort you when you're lonely. David said, he maketh me. Somebody stop right there. Y'all stop right there. Can y'all go back? Can y'all reflect back or even when y'all children's or your grandchildren's, they're running around and play all day long. And when you get tired of them or 
You know they don't play too much. They need to take a nap. Help me somebody. Amen. You, you, you tell them, go in there and lay down. Sometimes you have to make a child lay down. Sometimes you have to make a child sit down. Amen. That's what David is basically saying. He said, the Lord making me to lie down. Sometimes you don't realize how tired you are. Now, listen. I did it one time, and I thought about it after the fact. I worked 23 hours. Yes, I did. Mm. Worked 23 hours one day. Crazy as a dope dog. But when you lay down, you are down. Amen, hey, somebody. If you work 10, 12 hours a day, when you lay down, your body will tell you you're tired. You might not know it yourself. You might think you can drink coffee. You might think you can take uh, Valium and stuff. Think you can. But one thing for sure, when your body is tired, your body will let you know. David said, he maketh me lie down, even with sheep. When sheep are grazing, they don't know when they're supposed to do certain things. The shepherd has to show them, and the shepherd has to lead them to do what they must do. That's what I said a shepherd do. A shepherd lead. Here, he make them lie down where? In green pastures. Aren't you glad about it? God don't lead you in dry, burnt grass. Even though you may go through it. But when God brings you to a place, it's somewhere where you can graze, where you can eat, where you can get a plenty, where you don't have to work. He's making me to lie down in green pasture. And it's another thing laying down in green pasture. If you lay down on burnt grass or on concrete, on dirt, it's a whole lot different rest. You can't rest just laying on the ground. Y'all ever y'all ever watch? Y'all ever watch cowboy movies? Yes. <laughs> how, they, how they always running through the prairie and they'll find an old tree or something like that and lay down up on it, find an old stump, an old log, or even they'll take their, their cellar off to use it for a pillow. It can't be comfortable laying on a hard ground. I often wonder about a lot of people, they go out camping and stuff and they lay in the tents and they lay on the hard ground. But when God leads you, God leads you to a green pasture. No green pasture, they, they, they normally have that thick cushion grass. Somebody say amen. 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 And I, and I know my friend over at Approach Play Time. I hope you're doing that. Yeah. She, 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 she don't have to tell me on the dress. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew enough there on my own. She, 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 she said, tell you to get up and do something. Yeah, she might tell me to get up and do something. She said, I think she told me the other day, she said, you, you're always laying down. I, I don't have no problem with laying down. See, when, 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 when you got God in you, God give you that peace that surpasses all understanding that you can lay down at any given moment and rest. Because it's a lot of go, it's a lot going on around in this world, amen. But if you got God leading you, God will allow you to lay down and rest, even in the midst of storm, even in the midst of light. But she did share that with me. Uh, with concerning some of her patients. Some of her patients, they have gotten to that stage and, and, and a lot of times she has to tell them certain things that they need to do mm -hmm. because I heard, I heard Dick say it. I heard Dick read it in the scripture. When I was, when I was a child, I thought as a child. I act as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish thing. That old cliche, once a man, twice a child. Twice a child. If that ain't a truth, 
In life, you are a child at least twice in your life. You're a child when you're born up until a certain age, and even when you think you are grown, you still realize, have you ever noticed, even when you thought you were grown, you still rely on mama and daddy? And wish they were here today? Because life was more simple when, when, when you had somebody else you can lean on, amen? And even in the process, in your older age, you, end, you have a tendency to go back to that childish way. Oh, I can, I can, I can, I can see you. I can see, I can see the wheels turning. That's the price of getting old. Somebody say amen. amen. I mean, uh, Grandma Ross always said, "Ain't every day that you live to, to get old." But by the grace of God, amen. David said, "He leadeth me beside the still water." And one thing about sheep: sheep are calm animals. They don't like a whole bunch of uh, noise and a whole bunch of aggravation, a whole bunch of... If you take a sheep by uh, running water, they get upset. They get out of content. Sheep like calm water. And, and that's what God does for his people. David said, he leaded me beside steel water. Verse 3, he said, he restored my soul. And God do have to restore our soul. Because sometimes we get burned out. Sometimes we get overwhelmed. Sometimes we get discouraged. Sometimes we get weak. Sometimes we get battled, bruised. We get scarred. Amen. So we do need to be restored. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we get sick. And God has to restore us. David said, he leaded me in the path of righteousness. One thing for sure, you have to lead sheep. Oh, he don't say, let Jesus lead you. Let Jesus lead you all the way from hell, from all the way from earth, all the way to heaven. Yes. Let Jesus lead you. Sheep has to be led. But goats, I told you, Goats like to kick against. Goats don't want to be led. Goats want to just do their own thing. Amen? God leads his, his sheep in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And there is a way that seems right unto man. You know, we, we do things on our own thinking they are right. But they are not always right. David said in verse 4, yea, though, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Listen, you can walk through the valley, but you ain't got to stay there. Help somebody. You can walk through the valley, but that's not your destination. Amen. What you got to do is keep on walking. Somebody said walk through the valley. valley. Sometimes you can find yourself down in the valley trying to get home. Amen. You can make it through the storm as long as you keep on walking. Amen. Amen. In the valley, in the valley is considered a down, you know, low place. Not on top of the hill. You know, we can shout. We always can shout when things are going our way. When we're on top of the hill. When we're on top of the mountain. But when you in valley low. When, when sickness comes in. And when you're broke. And when you're busted and disgusted. When you don't have a friend in the world. When you are down in, in the valley low. David said. Look what David said. He said, yea, though I walk through the valley. Of the shadow of death. Have, have y'all ever, have y'all, have y'all noticed here lately when we was children, 
We used to be amused about our shadow. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think we can, I don't think we can grasp the concept in today's society. Because oftentimes, in order to, to see our shadow, we had to be outside. Help me, help me, somebody. We don't want to go outside nowadays. Amen, somebody. It ain't just the kids that don't want to go outside. We, we were sitting out, we were sitting outside yesterday, and I, I parked in, in 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 the shade on one side. And Sister Neil said, well, "Go up there, park in that shade up there. Look like it's more shade up there." And I had the air conditioner running, bro, John. And I said, "Well, no." I said, "I'm just gonna stay right here because we're in the shade." She said, "No, there's more shade up there. You, you can go." I said, "Okay." She said, "You can go. We can go up there, park up under that tree up there." And we can let the window down. That was real sweet. Pastor Neil crunk up the car. <laughs> Rolled up there in the shade. Parked in the shade. Turned the car off like Sister Neil suggested. Let all four windows down, bro John. You hear me what I'm saying? Let all four windows down. That ain't the end of the story. the end of the story. I, I just sat there, D. <laughs> D. I just sat there and I, I, I started doing like this, D. I, 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 I said, <laughs> 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 I mean, what, what was it? It had to be about like 95 degrees yesterday. And I, 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 I sit there and I wipe the other brow. She said, she said, you can crank the car up and let, <laughs> and let the window up and turn the air conditioning on. I said, no, you want to sit up here in the shade. But we don't go outside like we used to enough. How when we was children, we used to have fun just running and playing with our own shadow. Am I right about it? You know, you, you, try to, you ever tried to chase your shadow? You ever tried to catch your shadow? Can't do it. You can outrun it. You can outrun it, but you can't catch it. No. David said, Yea, though I walk through the shadow of death. And even a Christian going through or even the thought of dying. Look what he said. He said, I will feel no evil. You go through things in life. But still, it's not to say that things won't cause you to question or cause you to even fear, even think about it. But David said because he got God in him, he said I shall not fear. Because he knew that God was with him. Why? Now, I told you, a sheep will wander off from the flock. But God got a rod that when one of his sheep goes away, away from the flock, he stretched that rod out. And sometimes, some of them, some of them he can just, just, just you know, just gently bring them back into the fold. But some of them, some of them, they get too far gone and he, he have to give them a jerk. And that's the way we as Christians are. Sometimes we backslide and we get too far out there. God has to use his rod and his staff to comfort us, to let us know to come on back into the fold because he loves us and we are still his children. Thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemy. God will feed you when you're hungry. And the good part about it, God will feed you before your enemies. He will allow your enemy to see the blessing and the goodness of the Lord. Ain't that something to shout about? People will be wondering how you get to be so blessed. Why you got this and why you get that. It's all because of the grace of God. In the presence of my enemy. Thou knowest my head with oil. My cup running over. And one thing about it. You know man they think they can take things from you. But when God blesses you. Your cup running over. You have more than enough. 
Surely, you always will have two people that will follow you all the days of your life. Help me, somebody. No matter where you go, no matter what you get into, the Bible says goodness and mercy. Amen. If it had not been for mercy, we would have been gone a long time ago. But thank be to God for his goodness. Mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And I don't know about y'all, but I made it up in my mind. I want to be in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Ain't that enough to shout about? Yes. Many people have came and gave the preacher their hand and promised that they wanted to stay in the house of the Lord until they died. You heard the testimony. A lot of them lied and died right there at the same time because they're not here today. A lot of people don't serve God. They sit there and make oath. They promise to God that they'll serve them until they die. But where are they? Only the faithful, those who work for the Lord, those who know how good God has been to them, who want to give God back some of their time. And those people, you can see their work and their labor because of the life that they live. You can talk a good game. Everybody can sit there and say, I'm saved and sanctified if you were the Holy Ghost. But the life that you live will speak for itself. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Let us get into our printed text. Our printed text. Uh, Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Verse 9, 10, and 11. Twelve and thirteen and fourteen. They need be not slow, but follow of them who call to who, who through faith and patience inherit the promise. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself, saying, Surely bless I will bless thee. 15, 16, and 17. Immutability. Consolation. Yeah. 
Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Talking about full assurance. And in our in our introduction, it talks about sealing the deal. Uh, you know, talk about in the old days, a handshake would be enough for a contract. If two people shook hands on trying to make a deal, usually when they shook hands, that was their bond. Mm -hmm. Amen? In fact, it not matter. Back in the older days, a man's word was his bond. If a man said something, a man would not say anything unless he was sure that he can perform it. Somebody say amen. But not nowadays. You got contracts. You got a whole bunch of things lined up to try to keep people on the contract. But yet, people break contract. People break the covenant. People don't. Man, listen. Man do not. You can't hold nobody to their words nowadays. Shaking hands don't, don't, don't cause an agreement to be in bond. Because man will lie to you looking you dead in your eyes. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. The law demanded that those who utter the vow, so if you make a vow, you ought to keep it. Amen? Amen. Can, I, can, I, can I use myself again? You know, I made a vow to the Lord. One day, that's what that's what that's what Willie Neal Johnson said. Well, that's a, that's a nice old song. I made a vow to the Lord one day. I made a vow to Sister Neal. Amen. You know, when you make a vow in marriage, you vow to death do your part. Amen. Now I don't want to do anything where Sister Neal want to kill me. <laughs> I don't want to get out of hand where where she want to kill me and get rid of me, helping somebody. Yeah. So I better stay in line. Somebody ought to say something. Amen. But people nowadays, they, 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 they marry and they don't keep their promise. You know, things do change in life. I remember back in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, they wanted, they wanted Moses to write them a bill of divorce simply because of they was doing evil. People don't want to live right. It, it's, not, it's not the person fault that's trying to do right. It's just that you got a lot of people that's following evil. So if you make a vow, especially to God, you ought to honor that vow. Amen. Amen. And one thing about God, if God said it, that settled it. If God made you a promise, you can take that to the bank. Amen, somebody. Look at our, our lesson context. It talks about the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews doesn't state who wrote it. Now, a lot of people in life, they'll sit here and argue and debate about, well, since the book don't have a person's name, it shouldn't be in the Bible. They might say, well, it writing doesn't mean anything. It's not in the in context because because the person that put their name on it. It really don't matter who wrote it. It's God's word because it's in the Bible. Amen? Amen. Therefore, we should be able to follow by it and live by it. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we get too, sometimes we get too big for our own bridges. Amen? Amen. Sometimes we want to know too much. Amen. You don't need to know everything. Amen? Amen. Because sometimes if you knew more than you could handle, you'll think you're somebody. You'll be puffed up. The Bible says knowledge is puffed up. Sometimes when you think you know, him and him and me, how many times have your wife said you think you know everything? <laughs> you raise your hand all the time. <laughs> you know, if, if you thought you know everything, you think you somebody. You'll be puffed up, amen? Some things are not for us to know. Some things in life are really just that not important. Amen. 
So Hebrews give us several warnings, but Hebrews' basic point is that there is better. Somebody said better. In life, there are some better things. Amen. 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 Now, y'all tell me, y'all, 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 y'all familiar with cooking? Which is the better of two, the biscuit or light bread? The biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because now, 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 because you know that old that old slogan, that old saying, better than you know, next best thing to sliced bread. You know, some people think sliced bread was the best thing, but it ain't nothing like a biscuit. Come on, country folks. Y'all ain't been certified all your life. Now, you cannot sop, serve, and bubble with light bread like you can a biscuit. It don't taste the same. So, so, so some things in life are better. Amen? Hebrews points to that Jesus is better than the old priesthood. Jesus is better than the Old Testament. In other words, the Old Testament was good. The Old Testament, the law, it only showed you what was right and what was wrong. The Old Testament couldn't make you right. Somebody, somebody wondering here. Somebody wondering here. I'm, 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 I'm gonna come back to life. Let's 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 go to reality. Speed limit sign says 55. That don't make you go 55. Amen. When you we were coming down the highway yesterday, and and I was doing Lord knows I was doing about 75. Oh gracious. <laughs> That ain't fair. I mean, it's, it's, it's speeding. Speed limit is 70. I was doing about 75. A car came by me and said, Shoo. <laughs> If you're on the interstate, they will come by you doing 90 to 100. They don't want to take their foot off the gate. I mean, they just go by you. So the speed limit don't make you slow down. But I guarantee you the Georgia State Patrol sitting on the side of the road. <laughs> Listen, any of y'all ever been through Harlem? Highway coming from Thompson, you will start doing 25 before you get to Harlem. Don't nobody speed through Harlem. Harlem. Why? Because you know they will stop you. They got they got cops sitting. They, they sit back on the side of the road to make you. Now the Old Testament couldn't make you, but Jesus is better than the Old Testament. Because of what Jesus did on Calvary on the cross, he made us right before God. Amen. Somebody ought to shout right there. Amen. Look at the promise made. Verse 9 says, but now, here the writer of Hebrews, he backs up and clean up what had been said early on in in this chapter, in the sixth chapter of Hebrew. And, and, and a lot of times you have to tell people this in life. Okay, okay, considering all that I have told you about being saved, sanctified, being with the Holy Ghost, being born again, about how Jesus died on the cross. You know, if you believe in Jesus, Jesus died on the cross, laid on a bar of tomb, got up early one Sunday morning. A lot of people argue about that. We as Christians don't, but uh, I, like I said, I heard a fellow, a fellow just just debating and arguing with me. Well, he wouldn't, he wouldn't argue with me because I, I, I don't really 
allowed and not told, you know, regardless of what you're saying about the Quran, first of all, let's, let's set the record straight. You don't read the Quran. Second of all, you don't read the Bible and you don't know what's in the Bible. Right. So let's, let's, let's watch that. Now, what point are you making when you're trying to tell me about what you have read or what you thought you read in the Quran or what you saw on Facebook? That won't get either one of us into heaven. Somebody say amen. amen. Only what Jesus did will help us and save us to be right before God. Amen. amen. So the writer of Hebrews said, okay, let's, 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 let's forget about all that we said earlier, all that we debated and argued about. He said, but beloved. And notice he called them beloved. He's talking to the saints of the church. We are persuaded better things of you. Somebody else said, when you learn better, you do better. And that, 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 that is a true saying. You know, we, we hadn't always done what was right. But when we learn a better way to do a thing, we, we should do better. Amen. Since we've been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, since we came into Christ, we ought to live better. Amen? Amen. We as Christians ought to live a life that is pleasing in the eyesight of God. Our life ought to shine before men so they can see our good work. The writer says, we are persuaded better things of you. You ought to expect better things from from Christians. Amen. You ought to expect better things from church folk. Amen. Church folk shouldn't be out there acting like worldly folk. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And things that accompany salvation. See, so since you've been saved, you ought to change your ways. The Bible said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You ought to change the way you think. You ought to change the way you walk. You ought to change the way you live. Amen? Amen. Though we thus speak. Look at what he said. For God is not unrighteous to forget. I'm so glad that God won't forget when you do what is right. When you went to church, when you tried to feed the hungry, when you tried to put clothes on somebody's back, when you tried to uh, feed somebody, when you did something good for somebody, Amen. God knows all about it. Amen. Now, don't do, don't, don't do something to shine, to get to get a pat on your back. That's right. well, a lot of people, I've seen them on the job. <laughs> they, they'll go to the boss. Boss, I cleaned this up. Boss, I moved this. Boss, I did that. They be doing this so they can get a raise. You know, they do that kind of stuff. Yeah, when it's raise time, they'll shine because they want to get a better raise. You probably can't get them to do nothing 364 days out of the year. But when it comes time for a raise and they want a pat on the back, they'll sit there and do whatever they got to do. But I'm so glad God is not like man. God don't forget when you do what is right. Amen. Verse 10 goes on to say, say, he says, your work and your labor. God knows your work. In, 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 in Revelation, he said, I know Thy work. God knows what you do. Amen. And he knows how hard you work. God knows how you love. Amen. And that's one of the greatest commandments in the Bible. Thank you, that you will love one another. Yes. First of all, if you fear God and love God and, 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 and then love your neighbor as yourself. Those two commandments, the whole entire book hinges on. If you love God, if you fear God and love God and treat your neighbor, love your neighbor as you do yourself, everything else will fall in place. Somebody say amen. amen. Your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints. And like I say, when you try to help the saints, when you try to help somebody and do ministry, there's more to it than just coming to church. You got, to, you got to do something. That's right. You got to minister to some folks. Right. You might not be able to quote scripture. 
But when you try to tell somebody right from wrong, you try to tell somebody, thus said the Lord, when you try to feed somebody, when, when you minister to somebody in the love of God, God knows and he sees everything you do. When you go by the hospital, God sees you. God know about it. He know about your work. Look at verse 11. He says, and we desire that every one of you, every washed in the blood Christian, need to show the same diligence yes, yes. through the full assurance of hope. The right of concern for consistent. Everybody, every child of God, you ought to do your very best when it comes to serving God. Amen. You know, sometime in the church, you have only one or two people that will go to the hospital. Amen. You'll have only one or two people that's trying to feed the hungry. You have only one or two people that are trying to clothe the naked. You have only one or two people that try to help raise up these children. But the writer of Hebrews says that everybody should be doing this. And you should do it diligently. You should be in a hurry. You should, you should do it with passion. You should, be, you should be concerned about what you're doing. That ye be not slothful. You can't be dragging your foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, yeah, we talk about it. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I get kind of slowful. Sometimes, sometimes I come in and I don't feel like doing nothing. <laughs> I told you, Sister so Neil don't have to tell me when to, when to take a nap. I know how to take a nap. I know how to rest. Amen, somebody. Yeah, we know how to rest real good. All, all we got to do, if I come in the house, it's over with. If I sit on the couch, I probably won't do nothing the rest of the night. But if I if I make my way in the garage or outside and don't go in the house, I can cut grass. I can do what I got to do. So the writer said, don't be slothful. Don't be lazy. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. The reader are encouraged to follow the example of those who have been faithful. I often, I often watch my grandma and how she worked uh, so hard and tiresome in the church. Uh, every program that was in the church, she started them and she worked them. She would go out into the town and to the stores. And I'm talking about, I'm talking about back in the early 70s and in the 80s. Uh, she would go to go to these stores and ask them for a donation. And she would make programs and stuff in order to raise money and to see somebody work hard for the Lord. That's how we are supposed to do. For those who were faithful and those who were working hard, we ought to follow their lead. Somebody say amen. And living and working, working for the Lord will pay off after a while. Matter of fact, working for the Lord, the pay might be cheap, but the benefit outweighs the pay. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? You might not get paid down here, but for us that works in the ministry, our goal is to wear a crown over in glory. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So, don't give up, don't give out, don't get tired. God will, God will give you an inheritance. Look at verse 13. It deals with the promise being fulfilled. Not by man, but by God. By God's greatness. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater. He swear by himself. Can I take y'all back? Everybody look at me. What was what, what that? <laughs> Why? 
Now, help me, bro, John. You did it. Well, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Rest of don't know why either. Where are we getting this kind of stuff from? Why did we lick our finger, cross our heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye? Come on, somebody. Anybody here can tell me why we did this? Why we get some of the things we heard? If a black cat cross you on the left side, you got to turn around. You're going to have bad luck. Why we get this kind of stuff? That black cat will mind his own business and he will go on where he... Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. Same way the cat. The cat has somewhere to go. Whether he was red, yellow, black, or white. Cat had somewhere to go. But boy, we, we do, we'll take that same thing. We'll wet it real good. And we'll put a cross on that windshield because we don't want no bad luck. Good evening, somebody. I already done preach. Yep, somebody. <laughs> I already done preach. We can, we can close the doors of the church. We, we can open the doors of the church and go ahead and go home. Then we used to do that. Somebody's still doing it. <laughs> Somebody's still doing it. <laughs> People, yeah. People did strange things to convince you that they was right. But back from the beginning, if you can't perform something, if you can't do something, don't make an oath. Don't make a promise. Right. Don't make a promise you can't keep. So, to your point, Brother John, I think we did that to solidify or to make our promise seem strong or make us seem more righteous. All you had was a wet finger, cross hard, and you had a needle stuck in your eye. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah. So, First Peter, First Peter, the third chapter, and the ninth verse says, "I don't, I don't have time. I don't have time." First Peter, the first. I'm sorry. Second Peter, Second Peter, the third chapter, verse nine says, "The Lord is not slack concerning His promise. God is not like man. If God promised you something." It shall and it will come to pass. Matter not how long it takes. Because sometimes when, 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 when the promise of God, when we think God promised us something, if it don't show up on time, we think God has forgotten about us. Amen? Can you imagine the promise he made to Abraham? And Abraham waited for 25 years. And halfway through that promise, Abraham decided to take matters into his own hand and try to have a, have a child himself. So you don't sin because you didn't trust God. But then you decide to get back on the bandwagon and trust God and believe God. And 14 years later, the promise came to pass. But God is not like man concerning his promise. If God says something to you in the dark, He'll bring it to light. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm swearing to God. Like I said, you know, we, we swear, we swear, we swear, we swear for the Lord. Hope to die, stick a needle in our eye. Verse 14. Matter of fact, Sister K. Sister K. Go to Matthews. Go to Matthews, the fifth chapter. Matthew 5, 33 through 37. Give me just, give me just a minute and I, I'll be out of here. Thank you. I did. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, well, I did something. Good. You said. Uh, Matthews. Uh, Matthew 5. Mm hmm. 
Almost there. Let's see. Five thirty-three through thirty-seven. Okay, Matthew chapter five, verse thirty-three. Again, ye have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. Verse 34, But I say unto you, Swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne. Verse 35, Nor by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. Verse 36. Neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. In verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. Amen. Somebody say amen. Boy, we just lie, don't we just lie? We just we say we just say evil things when we do more than just saying yay and nay. Sometimes you just gotta say yes or no. One thing I learned is on the job, D, when you want to take a vacation or when you want to be out sick, you ain't got to tell nobody your business. Right. You ain't got to tell them what you got to do. Right. A lot of people, a lot of people will say, a lot of people will call in and say, <coughs> I'm going to use a sick day today. I ain't feeling good. Quit lying. Just tell the truth. I'm calling in because I'm going to use a sick day today. I ain't coming to work. Bye. That's all you got to say. I see it often. When a person, I don't carry money on me often. When a person walk up to you and say, you got a spare chain and you got a pocket full of money, quit lying. What you said, D? I ain't got no other spare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell them, I got some, but I ain't giving you no for drugs. Right. Now, if you want something to eat, I'll feed you. So we, we need to quit lying and swearing by swearing by everything else. We swear by heaven. We swear by our head. We can't turn not one string or hair. Great. We try it nowadays. Amen, somebody. Hello, somebody. I couldn't wait to get some gray hairs, and and and, and Lord knows they begin to come on a regular basis now. I, I walk in the house, deep. <laughs> deep I walk by the house, I, I look at something near the baby. I got some gray hair coming right. <laughs> I got some gray hair coming right here. You to be glad you got. Them. She'll say so. <laughs> you be glad you got them. Yeah, you ought to be glad you got them. Just keep on living. Yeah. yeah. Look at verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 and 15, and my, my time has run out. Saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless you. God says, You know, God said, There is nobody bigger than me. Amen. So I can't swear by nobody else Amen. but myself. Right. So he says, Surely, blessing, I will bless. God said, He will surely bless you. And if God said it, that settles it. You can go to the bank with it. He even told Abraham, I will multiply thee. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So even though Abraham didn't believe God, he even laughed. And even at one point, he tried to take matter into his own hand. God still forgave him because in the back of his mind, deep down inside, he believed God word. So therefore God blessed him, verse 16, by God's faithfulness. For men verily swear by the greater. Like I said, people will swear by themselves. I swear for the Lord, I swear, I swear. You know, quit, quit swearing. Just be truthful. And an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Like I said, they, they'll swear to keep all of the confusion down. Have you ever seen somebody swear a lie just to keep down confusion? Two wrong don't make nothing right. Amen? Right. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise 
the immutable. See, immutable. Immutable means unchanging. I'm glad that God is not like man. God don't change. And one thing for sure, God cannot lie. Man will lie. Amen, somebody. Man will lie to your face. Man will lie and, 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 and look and stare you right in the eye. But God cannot lie. That's, it's, too, it, it's impossible for him to lie. And if he said it, then that's selling. it. Verse 19 and 20 says, which hope we have as an anchor. And like I said, you ought to be deeply rooted, anchored and grounded in the Lord. Your soul ought to be anchored in the Lord. Both sure and steadfast. And you got, you got to know beyond the shadow of a doubt. You got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. And which enter into that within the veil. See, back in the old days, in the Old Testament, uh, in order, you, you couldn't enter into what they call the holiest of holy. It used to be a veil where only the priest could go in and talk to God for the children of Israel. But Jesus came and tore down that veil that where we have the right, we can go to God in prayer because of what Jesus did on the cross. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Whether the forerunner is for us entered. Jesus have already entered in the veil when, when he tore down uh, the veil. And when even Jesus made an high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And like I said, Melchizedek was one of the high priests in the Old Testament. But Jesus is better than Melchizedek. He is our high priest. Come on, Sister Bank, read our conclusion for us. The conclusion. The veil is sealed. The state of the land to cover over 586,000 square miles of land, which is more than 37 millions of acres. In 1867, the United States purchased Alaska from Russia for 7.2 million. And one of the largest land deals in history adjusted for inflation. The purchasing power of the sum of the money was about 122.2 million. In 2018, that was the year that Amazon purchased the home security company, Rain, for an undisclosed amount that many experts estimate to be approximately one billion. Therefore, Amazon purchase was about 90 times what was paid for a master. There are many different between there are many differences between these two transactions. But they had one thing in common, money, need, money needed to change hands to seal the deal. Okay, hold it right down. Have y'all noticed that this particular instance is somewhat in the news today? Putin have been playing around, uh, around up around Alaska, just like he invaded Ukraine, saying that Ukraine is part of Russia, now he's poking and prodding, acting like he wants to invade the U.S. because he claimed that, that Alaska belonged to them, although Alaska was purchased, bought. Aren't you glad you were bought with a price that the devil in hell can't take you back from God all because of what Jesus done on Calvary Cross? Read on. would bless all nations that was the beginning of the Abrahamic covenant. It was a promise that reached beyond Abraham immediately descendants and encompassed the entire world. The fulfillment of the promise lay in the work of Jesus on the cross. Once humanity debt of sin was paid, no further payment was required. That means that we are invited to be parents to the promise, not to be the purchase of a promise. The question is whether or not we can live our live out this life changing truth. The life the, to live this true meaning, truth means that we rest in the work of Christ and cease trying to redeem that which we have already inherited through faith. Yeah, 
since, since Jesus already died on the cross, the better thing that happened, we don't have to die no more. He already paid the price on Calvary. Back to the matter, I'm pretty sure none of us could have bore our own cross. If they made us to carry our own cross to Calvary, if they whipped us all night long like they did Jesus and spit on him, listen, folks, I ain't that bad, but if they had spit on me, I think I would have came off the cross. Yeah, some things would have been changing, some things would have been popping off then. Amen, somebody. Help me, Holy Ghost. Shit, <laughs> just something. You know, it's something we just we we just can't go through. We won't go through. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Our prayer for today. And our thought to remember. Amen. Be assured that your future is insured. Be assured that your future is insured. Brush up the tennis, brush with this in your hand. God bless all those that are on Zoom. God bless your sister Kay. You have anything you'd like to say? No, sir. Enjoy the lesson. And God bless you. Uh, just be reminded that we are on uh, summer vacation from Bible study. That we'll not be in a Bible study until further notice. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Have a good day.